My name is Stuart Chaffetz, and my son, Akian, is a 10-year-old boy with autism. Now, Akian is this wonderful, happy child, and he always has been. And that's why it was so shocking when he started school this year at Horace uh, Mann Elementary here in Cherry Hill, that we, literally from the first week back, we got reports that he had been hitting the teacher and hitting the aides and throwing chairs over. And none of it made sense because he had never been violent. And I had never seen him hit anyone. So you can imagine how distressing it was that suddenly something was happening to my son at school that was changing him. And it didn't make any sense. Well, of course we were in contact with the school. We had an IEP meeting. And for those who don't know what that is, um, it's when the parents sit down with the teacher and staff and you try to plan out your child's educational program. Well, from that, we brought in, or the school brought in, a behaviorist to try to find out what was going on. Now, the behaviorist sat down with Akian many times, and he never saw Akian exhibit any violence. Now, more importantly, he tried to create a scenario that would push Akian so far that he would lash out, and Akian did not. And that's critical. And it really led to everything that ha else that happened. Because if Akian was pushed and didn't do anything, what was setting him off? Why was he attacking his teacher and his aides? Now, what you need to know about this class, this is a self-contained autism class. And every child in that class um, has a uh, moderate to severe communication abilities. I mean, they can't tell their parents what happened in that class. Akeen was never able to tell me what was happening in that class. And knowing that, and all these pieces coming together, after six months of meetings, the behaviorist, I realized I needed to know what was happening in that class. And on the morning of Friday, February 17th, I put a wire on my son, and I sent him to school. And that night, my life changed forever. What I heard on that audio was so disgusting, vile, and just an absolute disrespect and bullying of my son that happened not by other children, but by his teacher and the aides, the people who were supposed to protect him. They literally were making my son's life a living hell. Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? What's today? Friday. Yeah, it is. So what do we have tomorrow? Woo! No and school. And what about Monday? No what about Monday? No school, no school on Saturday and no school on Monday. Yeah? Yeah. I'm doing the happy dance. Did you say? Yeah. yeah. I'm so very happy. You know why? This is really so hungover. <laughs> right, yeah. So, yeah. I, I had a, a bottle of wine my girlfriend last night. I completely, and this is not, oh, I forgot to be here. You know what I was doing this morning? Even? Oh my god. So oh, yeah. But the wine one. Even? Even said, are you sure you're not sick with? Oh no, I'm sure. I know who's in charge today. This is because of the wine. Okay, so look. We didn't change this. Tomorrow will not be Thursday. Yesterday was Thursday. Today is Friday. You know, you would never get away 
were talking about your alcohol abuse the night before if this was a mainstream class. And that's the point, isn't it? They knew none of those boys could go home and tell their parents that the person who ran their class that morning was under the influence of alcohol and was throwing up that morning and, and the teacher was joking about it. They were all joking because it's fun. It's fun to talk about the fact that you go out and you get drunk in front of a room full of 10-year-old boys with autism, isn't it? But that's what they did. And again, we still haven't gotten to the worst of it yet. But what that shows is just how they disrespected these kids. They didn't care. They treated them as if they were subhumans who could never tell what they were talking about. And no one stood up for them. Do we have any other holidays in March? Uh, uh, not not feel up. The mouth closed, hands down, quiet. I think, uh, uh, hands hands together. together. Mouth. I think you can, I think you can and birthday. Stop. Turn around, listen, please. Ian, you're not going to earn if your mouth is going. Okay, then what do you need? And where are your hands? Okay. Not your head, head your up. hands. Your head is up. Your head is up. Hand. <laughs> yeah, you know where it is? No. So yes, nose. Head. Look at his box. Okay. His box. Okay. Oh, boy. Is he going to? So one of the women in the class sets a cane off at the beginning of that clip. You heard how upset he got. You also heard Jody, not once, but twice in a very angry voice, tell him to shut your mouth, which is completely inappropriate under any condition. But it's also something they told us. They never talked to him like that. There was a behavioral plan that was supposed to be following, and you're never supposed to talk to him like that. Well, a couple days after I heard that, I wrote an email to the teacher. Her name is Kelly. And I asked her, I said, did anyone tell a can, shut your mouth? And she wrote back and said, no, we don't do that. We don't say that. And I never heard anyone say that. So I caught her in a lie. Now, the next part, the next clip I'm going to play for you, I need to do a little explanation. I'm a single parent. My son lives with me most of the time. He sees his mom every other weekend. Now, again, he has autism. He has anxieties about the transition back and forth. It's natural. What he says is, and he'll say this a lot, especially on those Fridays, which just happened to be a Friday he was going to see his mom. He says, may I see dad after mom? It's a simple question. He needs to be reassured. It's not a big deal. And listen to how they handle it, though. Kian very innocently asks, may I see Dad after Mom? What does Jody say? No. Do you know how mean that is? Now, I don't know why. Again, they've had this Kian in his class for a year and a half. So they, this is something that happens on a regular basis. They know it. This is not a surprise. And yet, they devastate him by saying that. No. And the reason how I know they devastate him, because he starts to cry. What did you do in the library up today? You looked at the sculpture. That's what you did? Mm -hmm. Did you look at books? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Did you go to see any books in the library, or you just looked at sculptures?
You call my son a bastard. You made him cry. You heard him crying innocently. And he's a bastard for that? What kind of sick, twisted person does that to a 10-year-old boy? And this is where I'm getting to the point where I tell you what I'm doing this video for. You know, because of the union rules or the, 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 the HR regulations, whatever reason why this teacher didn't get fired, and I can't control that. They won't tell us anything. But here's what I can control. Kelly, Jody, everyone who was in that room. I want a public apology for what you did to my son. I want your full name out. I want you to come forward. I want you to take responsibility for what you do. And then I want you to resign. Because no one who treats children like that, who call them vicious names, who humiliate them, who batter them verbally, deserves to be a teacher. What you did was so disgusting that you should be walking around with your head in shame. But because of the rules of silence, no one knew you would do it. And you're still teaching children today. I want an apology, not for me, but so one day I can play this video back for my son and say, Akian, you didn't deserve anything that happened to you. These people are at fault. I am doing this. I'm not looking to sue anybody. I'm not going to file a lawsuit. It's not about money. It's about dignity. This is to reclaim my son's dignity. You owe it to him. You have failed in every way in your responsibilities. And now you need to pay for it. And the price is a public apology to my son so that he doesn't bear these scars of what happened to him forever. I won't allow that to happen. It's your choice. I'm giving you the opportunity to come forward, which is why I haven't said your last name, so that you can take action on your own, make a full public apology to Akian for the terrible wrong that you did to him. Now, the second thing I'm asking for is for some legislative action to take place so that no teacher who bullies a child, especially one with special needs, is allowed to retain a job, is allowed to continue teaching, and is allowed to have all of this covered up in silence. And that blankets them. That has to stop. Come on. I'm not against teacher tenure, and this teacher does have tenure, and I don't know, I can't say that's exactly why this has been covered up, but for God's sakes, I hope every teacher listening to me understands that you need to help us clean house here. that I heard in the six and a half hours that I have, those few seconds are the worst. They hurt more than anything and they haunt, more than, they haunt me more than anything. Cain was saying, may I see, may I see dad after mom. Yeah, it's very sweetly he said it, innocently, nicely. Woman responds, you can't see, making fun of him. Everyone laughs. I know how much that hurt a kid. You can hear him cry. It set him off. That clip, what she did to him, set him off on a half hour meltdown. This was the second incident of violence that I directly relate back to a staff member humiliating him. 
For 30 minutes he threw over chairs because he was in pain. Because this woman had just stabbed him with words. And how easy it was for her to make fun of him. She seemed to do it in a way that she knew that no one would have a problem with it. In fact, they laughed. They encouraged it. Is that not the definition of being a bully? When you take someone with disabilities and you make fun of them and you humiliate them and you hurt them? Is that not what we all despise? My son didn't go to school. He went to prison and he learned to fight to survive. And that woman who made fun of him so easily is still working. Whoever she was, I don't know who she was. I don't know if she was a teacher or an aide. I've asked, but they're not going to tell me. But today, she's still in the Cherry Hill school system, making money, teaching kids, maybe making fun of them. We don't know. She certainly did it on this day. A week before I made this video, a little boy approached Akeen and I while we were shopping. He recognized Akeen and told me, out of the blue, that Akeen cries a lot in school. He cries a lot in school. And he cried a lot because the people who were supposed to protect him, his teacher and aides, betrayed him. My son, I am so sorry you went through all of this. You didn't deserve it. You are a wonderful human being, and I love you with all of my heart. Please don't let the cruelty of these vicious and miserable people change your beautiful nature.